All right, welcome in everybody. We're talking uh, high school basketball sectional draw Sunday of uh, of this time of year is always fun. You find out uh, where everybody's heading and where everybody's playing, and uh, and there's some surprises. There's always some uh, some arguments uh, back and forth. I'm sure as far as uh, why are we doing it this way or or whatever. But joined by Jeff Shanley and hopefully Trevor Andershock is going to be coming in. We have some some interviews lined up too. Uh, so hopefully my I'm uh, I'm not the most technological person in the world, Jeff, but uh, hopefully I can figure this out and we can navigate our way through it. I'm, I'm just here following your lead, Kyle. I'm going down with the ship if you're going down. <laughs> well, that's a that's a confidence boost. Well, what, let's start with uh, let's start with sectional eight at, at Noblesville, because I think I think everybody was kind of looking forward, especially the teams in there. Uh, as far as what was going to happen in that one. And, you know, right and right away. You know, you see Fishers play playing Carmel. Fishers is twenty-one and one, uh, ranked number one in the state. And and the prize you get for that is to play uh, to play Carmel, the team that beat you, uh, the one team that beat you <laughs> during the uh, during the season. So uh, that it doesn't get much tougher than that, I would say. And you know, Carmel they they, uh, they went back to back. They beat they beat Fishers. They beat Lawrence North. Uh, both teams were undefeated and ranked number one in the state at the time they played them. Uh, so it, you know, it's a team that started five and nine, but it, but it's played a lot better, obviously, here in the last uh, six weeks or so. And uh, you know, I think Fishers is probably still the favorite here, Jeff. But uh, you know, it, it doesn't get uh, much tougher than that. And you could argue that the benefit here is that they don't have Noblesville or Westfield on their side of the bracket. Uh, but you know, to play Carmel right out of the gate. And then have HSC your your rival uh, in the next game potentially pretty tough draw. Yeah, you look at and it's I think this draw worked out very well in terms of, of balance. Um, when you potentially look at Carmel as at eleven and ten, and you know Zionsville eleven eleven being the worst teams in your sectional, you know it's going to be just a absolute meat grinder. Um, some people prefer to have a buy. Some people prefer to get in there and, and get the jitters out on Tuesday night. Um, so I think obviously Carmel and Fishers is a, a huge rivalry game. And then if Fishers uh, gets revenge and knocks off Carmel, they have Mudsock part two in the semifinals. Hey Shark, uh, Trevor, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear? Can you hear Jeff? I cannot. <laughs> you can't either. He's talking. Uh, Shark, we can't hear you. I don't think uh, so. Uh, keep 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 going, but uh, we're not we're not picking up what you're throwing down. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, we were talking about uh, we were we were talking See, about it takes him to. <laughs> We were talking about Fishers uh, in the Carmel uh, draw there, and uh, I don't know if it, it cut out because I brought you in or what, but you know that was kind of the number one thing that uh, you know kind of comes up when you when you see that see that draw happen in that sectional eight at Noblesville, and the number one uh, team, you know, their only loss this year came to Carmel, and they get them right out of the gate. Uh, so that's kind of where we were starting the conversation. All right, sounds good. Yeah, that was one of the the few ones I have seen. Um, this is kind of like running in uh, midstream here, but that did uh, really jump out to me too. Just so hard to beat a team when you're that close two times in one season. So it'll be interesting to see if Carmel can pull an upset on Fishers again for basically the second time this season. Yeah, that's going to be a fun. I know and Trevor's just coming off the uh, IU game here, so he's kind of getting his bearings, but uh, that sectional eight, uh, Jeff, can you hear me now? Are you, Uh, we're having some audio issues with the with Shark, but uh, it looks like you're un you're unmuted and everything. So uh, hopefully that'll work for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, Noblesville, uh, you know, as the uh, you know as the as the host there in that sectional, and uh, they get Westfield on their side of the bracket, and, and Zionsville is on that side as well. And Noblesville and Zionsville play each other. Uh, so I think they only you know, and we'll hopefully talk to. Uh, uh, one of the coaches here in that sectional shortly, but uh, I think the only advantage, uh, Trevor, is probably just that 
you know, to, to get the buy, you know, that way, you know, and, and uh, Garrett Weininger from Fisher said as much uh, here recently, you know, the, the advantage here is that, uh, you know, you get in and, and, uh, and get a buy into the uh, second round. So you only have to win two instead of three. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that section alone is just incredible to look at, especially the Sagarin ratings and stuff like that. it's just, Obviously, it could go in a big tangent of should it be, you know, seated for the regional level or semi-state level, but that sectional is just loaded top to bottom. It's incredible. So, yeah, I agree that the only the only advantage is getting a buy, and you could even argue sometimes that's, you know, a disadvantage because the other teams kind of get their feet under them first, and then you're playing kind of cold, if you will, a team that's already played in that environment and has a win under their belt. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. The other, uh, the other sectional, I think that, uh, you know, we talk about a lot is, uh, is, is the uh, sectional 10 uh, and that'll be hosted by uh, Lawrence North this year. I had a coach in the sectional uh, text to me the bracket from last year and, and, and it's, it's the exact same. Uh, and I didn't realize it was until, uh, until I looked back and was like, okay, that's uh that's the exact same bracket as last year. Now the, the teams are, are flipped, you know, home and away or whatever on a couple of them, but you know, cathedral gets the buy and uh, you know, LC and Warren are playing to, to get the chance to play cathedral. And then uh, you know, addicts and tech play each other. And the other matchup is uh, is North central and LN. So uh, you got a potential LN addicts uh, matchup in the, in the semifinal potentially, and uh, Cathedral up there uh, with the buy. So just sort of an oddity of the whole thing. And again, you know, I, I think I would always choose that want to have the buy. Um, you know, I, I guess you could. The other thing would be you, you play a lesser opponent, I guess, and kind of get your, you know, get your feet wet a little bit and, and kind of get yourself going. But uh, but yeah, I, that, that's sort of a strange. I don't know if I've ever seen that before as far as having the same bracket year over year. <laughs> yeah. The IHSAA liked it last year. They said, hey, let's run it back. Let's not even draw. Let's just run it back. <laughs> let's not mess with it. What What do you got, you know, in that sectional? Do you, do you think LN is still the team to beat? They've, they've had uh, a little bit of a struggle here. Uh, they started out 17-0, uh, and 0, but just 3-3 uh, three and three in their last six overall. Yeah, I still think they're the team to beat. Um, I, I think they'll get everything kind of squared away going down the stretch here. Um, when you have guard play like that, I think it's just a matter of time um, before they kind of get everything fixed and on the right track again. But Cathedral and Attics are two top teams as well. So I still put Ellen as a team to beat, but and it could really go between any, any of those three schools, I would say. And uh, so, yeah, that Tuesday night will be LC and Warren, uh, then Wednesday, Tech and Addicts. This is all a week, a week away still. Uh, so a week from this, this Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, Tech and Addicts on Wednesday, North Central and uh, Lawrence North on Wednesday, and then Cathedral uh, play the winner of that uh, LC Warren game. So again, pretty, pretty, uh, and we'll talk again uh, more with the coach out of that sectional here in a bit, <clears throat> but uh, really good sectional. Also, the the Greenfield Central, you know, we'll, we'll be talking a lot of 4A tonight, I think, uh, for the most part, uh, and then touch on some of the other ones. But uh, Greenfield Central, the only undefeated team, uh, but they have to play Anderson, which is the team that's knocked them out uh, the last two years. So uh, Greenfield Central catches no break. They get a host the sectional, sectional nine. But, you know, Anderson's a team that's knocked them out twice uh, the last two years. So <laughs> probably not the team uh, the Cougars really wanted to see in that situation. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to, there's a lot of good teams in there. New Pal and Mount Vernon are playing each other on, on Tuesday night. And then, uh, Richmond's playing Muncie central, um, uh, and Pendleton Heights gets the buy. So you've got uh, Mount Vernon and New Pal. Well, the winner of that would play Pendleton Heights in the, in the semifinal, but, uh, probably not what, uh, Greenfield central necessarily was hoping for to see Anderson come up on the screen. Yeah. I really like the Anderson team, Damian King leading the way there. That's definitely going to be a tough one. And this is kind of a under the radar, really good sectional. Yeah, obviously, you just ran down a bunch of them, but Richmond started off the year, what were they, like 15, 16, and 0 at one point? Um, really good junior class there uh, for Billy Wright. So that's a team who probably isn't getting a bunch of headlines statewide, but it's a really good team and 
could really come out and make some noise here, you know, against a, maybe a, a Greenfield Central or Anderson, something like that down the road in the sectional. Yeah, I don't think the draw necessarily was what Greenfield Central would have hoped for, uh, obviously with Anderson and then a Richmond team um, led by Cedric Horton there. And 19 and three for the Red Devils. They've lost to two of their three losses are to sectional opponents, though Anderson and New Pal here as of late, but um, a lot of really good individual talent here, you know, Horton at Richmond. Uh, Kyle, I know you're a huge fan of Julius Gizzy over there at New Pal. He's um, just been a one man wrecking crew here in the last five, six weeks or so. Obviously, Braylon Mullins, one of the best juniors in the state for Greenfield Central. Um, and then the, the cast at Mount Vernon, you know, they've got some really good, uh, talented pieces as well. So, uh, like Trevor said, a, a really sneaky good sectional doesn't always get the hype that sectional eight or sectional 10 does, but there, there should be some really good games that week out of Greenfield. Well, let's bring in, uh, we we're talking about, uh, sectional 10 and, uh, we wanted to uh, bring in one of those coaches that, Chris, can you hear? Are you able to uh, chime in here? Yeah, I can hear you. Gotcha. Chris Hawkins, uh, Chris Wasaddick's uh, coach. And I don't know, uh, it wasn't you who told me this is the exact same bracket as last year, but was that something you noticed when that when that popped up on the screen? Yeah, immediately. It was flip-flop. <laughs> I noticed we didn't have the boss, so that was – it said Indianapolis, so I got – you know, thinking, hey, we may have got the buy for once. Then saw it was Cathedral, and then saw the matchups, and it's wow, it's the same thing as last year, just kind of flip flop. Yeah, that's it's interesting how I, I'm assuming that happens uh, time to time. We just maybe don't notice it or realize it in different areas. But uh, Chris, your team is a city champion. Uh, you've played the the county champion Lawrence North uh, previously. You know, I covered that game back in I think it was right before Christmas. Basically, uh, you guys lost by one. Uh, you know, gave them a pretty good uh, battle down the stretch there, and then uh, you know came up a point short. Uh, I know you're not looking ahead. You know, I'm sure they're not either. They played really good North Central team that almost beat them here uh, right after the uh, county tournament. Uh, you've got to deal with tech first of all, but uh, you know, just overall thoughts on sectional 10 this year and, and how your team's playing up to this point. No, nah, I mean, we can't look, you know, look, uh, look forward. Anyway, we got Carmel who's beat almost everybody in the sectional. So they've been playing well. So uh, got it to play them Tuesday and then we'll, we'll look forward to the sectional, but looking at sectional 10, I mean, every team, uh, it has been playing well lately. You can say LN has probably lost uh, some games, but like Tech won't be an easy game. Uh, they've been playing well toward the end of the season. Uh, so it'll be a game that we have to come out, be ready for, match their energy. Um, like I said, LC has been playing really well down the stretch. Uh, Warren has a talent at any time to get it going. Um, and then, like I said, North Central and then LN both uh, – have had great years. So um, there's no nights off. So we're going to have to bring it each day. So, um, you know, Cathedral uh, gets the buy. I know Coach Delaney's happy. I don't think he's had the buy in a while. <laughs> well, he had it last year. So oh, there you go. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. My bad. <laughs> and it helped them. They, they're they back to back sectional champs, obviously. And, you know, I wanted, so so you guys last year were also the city champs and and probably didn't play uh, the sectional championship exactly how you're hoping for. You know, what what is that experience? Uh, how, how does that maybe factor into this year for you guys? And you know, I know there's some bigger goals out there for you. No, I I just think you know we got to the sectional championship just you know didn't score didn't didn't uh, shoot the ball particularly well didn't play defense particularly well they. They uh, shot a high percentage, uh, shot a high percentage from three. So, uh, you know, it's just been kind of just, you know, as we go through these different parts of the season, uh, as we get to the sectional, we have to remember uh, kind of what happened. And I think our kids understand that. I think uh, once they saw the draw, uh, it was just like, you know, we got, we have to finish this time. Uh, so uh, I think we've grown each year uh, from Chris and Desmond. And, you know, some of those juniors that are there, Ronson Thomas, 
Um, then with our seniors, uh, Rutland, uh, Jenkins, Peyton, uh, we just got, you know, they just, we have a sour taste in our mouth from um, that game last year. So uh, I think, like I said, you know, you just got to take each game uh, day by day, not look, look forward to anything. Um, you know, I know we're not the favorite. So I think, uh, you know, as you've talked to us, we kind of thrive on that. So uh, we'll we'll be interested to see what Mr. Harrell and his uh, formulas come up with um, <laughs> and everything like that. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we want to play well. And I think it's just taking each game one game at a time. Um, and then, like I said, just uh, attacking – attacking those opponents. Hey, Chris, you'll uh, be happy to know that I did pick uh, Lawrence North as a favorite still. So. Well, we, we we know. And I, they've, been, <laughs> they've been great all year. So, like I said, it, uh, they deserve it. Like I said, we've had a couple of games where uh, we just didn't uh, shoot the ball particularly well. And even when we played Lawrence North, uh, we lost by one. But uh, you can't beat a team turning the ball over 18 times. And I think during the, the game, I looked at Kyle and said, hey, uh, how many turnovers is that? And so, uh, you know, we have to be better with the ball. Uh, and then I think we have to make sure we don't forget about Briscoe down low. Um, and then if our guards still do the same, um, I think in that game we actually outscored their backcourt. Uh, just got to make sure Miller – you know, Miller won off that game also. So, uh, like I said, but, you know, got to get through Carmel, then get to the sectional. So, um, right now our focus turns to Carmel uh, because, like I said, they've been able to knock off a lot of teams. So, um, Coach Osborne's doing a great job with that team. I know they're young, but, like I said, they're, they're playing their best basketball at the right time. And I think when you asked me that, I said 13, and it was uh, right at the end of the first half. So, that wasn't a good – it wasn't a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no, not at all. Well, Chris, what's, uh, you know, kind of off the topic a little bit, but what's this weekend been like? I know you, you've had a lot of things going on with the All-Star game and, and uh, you know, look like uh, I talked to Oscar last week about what they're doing over there for him at the school. And I know that'll be won't be for a little while, but uh, you've had a lot of stuff happening over there at Attics this, this weekend. Yeah, we, um, you know, Tyrese Halliburton and the Pacers and Dix uh, were able to um, – do a donation to our athletic department, uh, which is really big. We uh, have had the Oscar Robertson play a touch of glory. I think they've been there for the last three or four weeks. Uh, there was a, like a private screening um, yesterday with Bill Hampton, Willie Mayweather, Hallie Bryant, um, and John Gibson. And so, um, you know, that was really cool yesterday um, to see that. Um, and then actually being at the tip-off classic where the NBA actually did the announcement about the uh, statue that'll go up in the front of the school for Oscar. Um, so it's been, it's been really nice, man. Just spotlight's been over there. We also had um, the hoop bus came over. We had uh, a scrimmage, an impromptu scrimmage with them. And then we also had the retired NBA veterans. So uh, Kareem Rush, Brandon Rush, Eddie Gill, uh, Meta World Peace came for two minutes and plays <laughs> and left, but uh, uh, nah, it was it, it was fun, man. Our kids liked it. Um, you know, it was just a great time, just you know, for the city to have a spotlight on them for All Star, and then us being able to share, you know, our school um, just with these outside partners, and to you know, just show how special uh, the school, our history, and uh, our basketball history is. Uh, within the state and within the nation. Well, Chris, I appreciate you coming on again. Attics uh, 18 and five right now, uh, coming off a win over uh, Purdue Poly. And like you said, they play, uh, Attics plays at Carmel on Tuesday night. So that'll be a good warm up to get ready for next week. And sectional 10, which is always a blast, and uh, be played at Lawrence North this year. Attics will play Tech in the uh, first round of uh, sectional 10. So again, thanks, Chris. Appreciate you coming on. No problem. Thanks, Trevor. Jeff. Hey, good to see you, Chris. Hey, Take I have one Chris. question just for Jeff. Who who's your favorite for sectional team? <laughs> oh. Put it on the board. Why, this is why Kyle muted me. Um, <laughs> I I probably I probably gotta go with the Wildcats at LN 
right now, Chris, but, you know, I think the combination you have of, of Rutland and Briscoe, um, one of those guys gets going. I mean, it's going to be hard for anybody in that sectional to kind of pick their poison on who they got to stop. So, um, you know, I think you guys are right there with them at the top and uh, look forward to seeing how that plays out. That's always a, an amazing week down there in Indy. Yes, we just we just hope Kyle goes to sectional nine. I think I'm <laughs> in fifteen with him at games. I know you're I'm not giving you my pick yet. Material for the locker room, Chris. You can put my name next to Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Chris. Right. See you, Chris. It was a good discussion with Chris Hawkins, and uh, I, I think uh, I think they're going to be. Maybe, you know, I think LN, like you guys said, is probably the favorite there still. But, you know, I covered that game. Maddox was right there with them, and they won the city. Uh, they've had good success against uh, some of the teams in that sectional. So I think they're they're probably in a better shape last year or this year than they were uh, going into last year's sectional. They're older, uh, and I just think overall a better team this year. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I I did kind of overlook Attics there. It's good to have Seahawk on right afterwards so that he can call me out on it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't overlook them. Obviously, they've had a great season, and their talent's on par with everybody in that sectional. So, like Shark said, it'll be interesting to see how it breaks, but uh, always, always fun at uh, sectional 10. Well, we were talking about sectional 8 up at Noblesville, and uh, Garrett Weiniger joins us now. And uh, on my observations and takeaways, Garrett, number one was the Fishers Carmel uh, matchup. I think, uh, you know, what what was your, uh, you know, you know, you're going to get somebody good. Uh, what was your initial reaction when you see that uh, matchup come up on the screen? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think in the sectional there's really a good draw, but you know, we beat 21 teams, and they gave us the one team we didn't beat. I mean, come <laughs> on, we gave you 21 other ones. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it's everybody's good in the sectional, so it, it is what it is. You know, you get, you got to. I think the only advantage is maybe getting the buy, so you only have to beat two good teams instead of three. But um, yeah, you know, we weren't really looking looking forward to anything. It, just got to prepare for who you get and hope you come ready to play. I think any, I think any of the six teams could win the sectional. And we, we I talked about uh, that with you the other night, Garrett. Was uh, you know what what do you prefer? Because I, I have heard some coaches say, hey, I don't, I kind of like playing early in the week. Uh, we kind of get our legs under us a little bit, and I can I can understand that uh, mentality for sure. But I think you probably want to play a team maybe you know you're most likely going to be and not and not really have to struggle. In this one, I think you're just better off playing two games rather than three, just by the math of it. Yeah, that, that's kind of my thought, but it hasn't really worked out that way. I think I saw you put out in your article that it was you know it's kind of went back and forth between it whether a you know a buy team or a team that had to play three wins it, but this year, I think it's maybe as balanced as it's ever been. Um, so I definitely think playing two would have been my preference. But, you know, you got to play play what you get. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a sectional this balanced when you have six teams and the worst team is ranked 21 in Sagarin. Has that ever happened in the, in the state? I mean, usually you have at least one team that is not in that, you know, top 25, 40 range. I don't know. That's that's your guy's job. You have to do some research. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you, but yep. I know that it's a. I mean, I can't remember it being this balanced as far as having every team in the top twenty-five. But you know, our sectional it's always close to that. But having you know, currently I think the top three teams in, in most of the polls, and then having everybody else be in the top twenty or twenty-five is, I think it's a testament to the coaches and and the players we have in our sectional. You know, it's it's loaded with not only great players but coaches who really do a good job preparing their team. So it's. You know, I, I think it's just one of those things, who's going to get hot at the right time, who's going to make shots, to be honest, who's going to be on. I, th I think any of the teams could win it on any given night. Well, and again, uh, sectional eight at Noblesville, it's uh, Zionsville, Noblesville, play that first night on tu at, on Tuesday, the first night, and then Carmel Fishers. Uh, and then uh, HSC will be awaiting the winner of Carmel and Fishers, and then Westfield will be awaiting the winner of Zionsville and Noblesville. So I guess the one benefit is you have – Noblesville and Zionsville on the other side of the bracket, uh, who are ranked number two and three. I, that's another question: is has there been a top, you know, one, two, and three? I think I think there has been maybe going back, uh, 
I want to say the Anderson, the, the Anderson sectional one year back in the day, maybe had a one, two, and three, but got to be pretty rare. Uh, Garrett, when you think back to that uh, Carmel game, I guess, you know, what do you, what, what do you feel like? It is your one loss this year, like you said. What, what do you feel like maybe you guys didn't do? And what, it, what did Carmel do in that game to uh, make it tough for you guys? I mean, obviously, they're always really good defensively. Coach Osborne does a great job defensively with with their game plan and just being disciplined with their principles. And and we didn't do a very good job moving the ball. We just kind of dribbled around. I don't, you know, we just didn't move the ball, didn't get into our actions. Um, they were very physical with our ball handlers, and we just didn't handle it well. Didn't play at our pace. Really, you know, we tried to play fast. We really played slow in that game. Didn't didn't get much in transition. That's credit to them getting back. But um, I think that's the main thing. And then matchup wise, we. I think we did a poor job kind of with our matchups and how we handled them as well. So it was a, not a good night for us. Um, but at the same time, I think sometimes you need those games to, to learn where you're when you're winning, even if you know things need to be fixed, sometimes they get overlooked. So I think it was positive for us and we were able to learn from it and bounce back with some really good wins here the last couple of weeks after that loss. So, you know, I probably wouldn't pick to play them, but you know, you're obviously, you know, that's the game we lost. So it's an opportunity for our guys to, bounce back and, and show that they can they can play with them uh coach i want to ask you you have um one of the most exciting freshmen in the state in cooper zachary leading your guys i just want to see the growth that you've seen in him from starting off as you know new to the varsity level to where he is now just in his freshman year and then what was the process like with your veterans with the keenan gardeners the miller mccartney's john anthony halls in kind of understanding that they're going to have to turn the reins over to a freshman and kind of guide him and mentor him along the way through the bumps in the road. Yeah, I think the unique thing about Cooper is just his IQ at his age. I mean, he's he's so smart and his basketball IQ is so high that it really, I mean, Keenan and Giantine and those guys, Millen, all those guys are such good leaders that it kind of just happened organically. It really wasn't, it's not like I sat down and had a conversation with him and said, you know, we're going to have a freshman point guard. It just, you know, throughout the summer, he really played well coming off the bench for us. Obviously, our roster changed going into the season, and we needed a point guard, and he was he was our best option. So all fall, we kind of knew that's where it was headed. Um, we were planning on that, and he he was really uh, ready maturity wise to step into a leadership role, which most fifteen year olds just aren't ready. You know, they might be good enough basketball wise, and there are plenty of guys who are good enough basketball wise, but to prepare the way we need to prepare at our level. And to be able to retain all the information and, and be a point guard at that, there's just not many guys at his age who are ready to do that. And and he is. I mean, he's just he's mature beyond his years. He's his IQ is super high. He he really is a vocal leader too. Like and, and credit to those guys as juniors and seniors, though. Like it could it would have been easy to be like, I'm not gonna buy into having a freshman point guard, but those we got great kids as far as juniors and seniors, and, and really Cooper makes it easy because he's so unselfish. You know, he gets the he gets those guys shots. He helps get Keenan the ball. You know, he helps get Tayden open looks. John Anthony's and Millen, those guys just they're just winners. They'll do what you ask and they're they're willing to buy into whatever the role is. And those guys have done a great job leading Cooper, but also being willing to be led by him at times. And I think that's pretty rare to have senior and junior leaders who are leaders of the team, but they're also willing to listen and, and value a freshman and and, and two freshmen because Jason Gardner has been huge for us as well. So to have those older guys embrace those two and really, you know, bring them along with what we expect in our culture, it, it's been really fun to see that. It's been one of the, the most fun things I've experienced as a coach. Just it's pretty rare to have two freshmen come in at this level and be ready to play. Obviously, a couple of years ago, Jalen came in as a freshman and was ready to play, but to have two guys on a team that's winning this much that are freshmen and contributing. I can't remember that happening. So it's, it's been a lot of fun to see. I know I've had people Garrett this year ask, uh, you know, and I'm sure people ask you too, you know, why uh, you've been better this year than, than last year. Cause you lose such a talented player in Jalen Harrelson. And my response is always, it wasn't, I mean, Jalen was a very unselfish uh, player. I mean, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't one of these addition by subtraction type things, but I think you just have had a lot of guys get better. And, and yeah. to me, uh, Keenan Garner is, is number one. I mean, as far as his, his improvements just been through the roof and he, I saw you got the, the Bradley offer and he's got some division ones now uh, starting to, to, to offer him. Uh, what, what have you seen the biggest change in him from last year to this year? 
Yeah, any first anyone who says that, I don't think they saw us play this summer with Jalen. You know, because we were really, really good this summer with Jalen. Um, it was really just the growth in those other guys. Like you said, we take a lot of pride in our player development and how we do things in practice, really emphasizing that. And guys who come in and buy in typically get a lot better. You know, um, Jalen included in his two years here. And Keenan coming in late, moving, you know, his dad being in, and working for the government, being overseas for a while and coming back, he uh, – he was new to playing basketball here. He played basketball overseas for seven years. So just the American game a little different, especially here with the competition level. So last year he kind of went through just a learning phase of playing here, but also just his development really has been as much as any kid I've seen in a 15 month span of how much better he's gotten. And, um, you know, not only him, but John Anthony's growth from a sophomore to a junior year has been huge. What he's done not only offensively, but what he's done defensively, night in, night out, guarding some of the best players in the state has been super impressive. But, yeah, I mean, Keenan's gotten better with the ball. You know, last year he pretty much played a traditional five for us. This year he he brings the ball up a ton. He's he's handling the ball in pick and rolls. And, uh, you know, if he gets a rebound, we're going, and he's taking it. And he's he's probably one of the best I've seen in transition, it, you know, just pipping it, getting off the backboard and going as a big guy. He passes so much better. He's shooting the ball better now. He's hitting hitting his outside shot more. Last year, he was pretty much all to his right. Now he can go right and left. So, I mean, to me, Keen is just a credit to, like, if you come in, do what we ask, buy into the skill work, put in extra time, you know, this is what can happen for you. And he's just done that. He's a worker. He he gets an extra work. And when we're doing skill work and practice in spring and fall workouts, he's going through it hard and focused. And to see him get some of these offers now, he's, he's a kid that since he got here, I've been trying to call schools like, hey, this kid can play at that level. And finally, you know, they're coming around. So it's just, it makes you happy for a kid like that because he's such a good kid. You know, he deserves it. So really excited that he got the Bradley offer yesterday. And Garrett, I know. Uh, so, so just lastly here, you got, you know, before you get into sectional play and I'm sure you're going to start uh, prepping for Carmel, you know, probably already have, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, the clock's ticking, but you do have a game with North central uh, Tuesday, you know, these last, I, I'm curious, from a coach's perspective, how much do you put into this last game against North Central? And, you know, are, are you kind of already kind of turning the page a little bit looking to uh, to the to to the sectional play? Yeah, the last few years, I've really tried to wait and really focus on North Central. And we've lost to him two of the three years anyway. So <laughs> and then we haven't won the sectional. So I'm like, I'm trusting my assistant. Let's go around with North Central and I'm going to kind of move forward on focusing on the sectional and try to. You know, I have some really good assistants to do a great job with the scouts. So, obviously, I'll watch two or three of their games and, and get ready. But my focus is going to be kind of moving toward Carmel and um, and also just even in the North Central game, trying to start to work on things that are going to help us in that game and, and prepare our guys for that. And that's the only thing about our schedule that's kind of tough. You know, you go play North Central in that last game, which is a completely different style of play than we'll play in our sectional and against Carmel. So, it's kind of wonder if we should switch that around a little bit and get some games toward the end that prepare you a little better for playing a team like Carmel. But it is how it, it is, you know, kind of how it worked out. And North Central's a really good team, and it'll be a, a good test for us. And I think it's good to have a game. You know, there's some teams who don't have a game this last week, but especially if you were to get the bye, you don't want to go two full weeks without a game. So I think it's good to have a game and, and you know, keep fresh and, and, and stay dialed in. So I'm, I'm going to really try to focus on Carmel because, you know, we've – we beat them our first year at Fishers, but the last three years we've not beat them. So it's obviously been a challenging game for us, and they do a great job. So we got to figure out a way to score these games. These games in the 40s and 50s, I don't <laughs> like too much. So I'm going to try to find a way to score on them, which isn't easy. I say North Central will probably benefit because they're playing uh, LN in the sectional. So I, I think yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll be helpful for them for sure. So, uh, but Garrett, appreciate it again. Uh, Fishers will, Fishers number one in the state in uh, 4A. And uh, plays the only team that they've lost to in the sectional. So they found that out tonight. Uh, good luck, Garrett. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all you do covering us. Appreciate good it. Good luck. Thanks, Garrett. Well, guys, just wanted to uh, – I think we're going to have one more guest pop on here. But uh, anything else? Have you guys been able to uh, – uh, Jeff, I know you, you were able to take a little bit longer look at 4A, you know, kind of before we got started. Was there anything that really popped out to you other than – kind of what we've covered so far. I, there is some things up north I thought that were were sort of interesting. Some some sectionals I think that are pretty pretty balanced. Um, yeah, you look at um, the two Fort Wayne area 4A sectionals, I think sectional 5 in East Noble, um, that is as wide open as that sectional's ever been, I think. Um, really intriguing first-round game on Tuesday between Carroll and uh, Northside. Carroll has struggled a little bit, 
um, been up and down this year. Um, but they were able to beat Northside by six just a, a couple weeks ago. Um, they seem to be playing better lately. Snyder's got uh, three freshmen that are contributing, so they may be a couple years away. They're sitting here at 500. They've got a really physical East Noble team. Um, and then the two teams that got buys are probably towards the bottom end of the pecking order here. So really it's going to be interesting to see who comes through Tuesday and are they going to be able to avoid a letdown on, on Friday night, you know, not look ahead. And then you look at sectional six at Homestead. Um, I think you have to look at the Wayne generals as favorites led by Javon Lewis and, and that crew down there on the South side of Fort Wayne. Um, but you look at their draw Southside and New Haven, uh, two teams that will get up and down. Southside can kind of play uh, a bunch of different defenses. They'll, I don't want to say junk it up because that's doesn't really give JJ Foster a bunch of credit there. But you know they they do things to make things difficult on you. Then you look at the other side, uh, Homestead, Columbia City, having a really good year there. And then I know uh, Trevor, if you want to talk about Sectional Two up at Chesterton. Uh, there's some interesting um, matchups and potential paths to the title game on Saturday night up there. Yeah. Hold that, hold that thought right. one second, right. Trevor. We're going to uh, revisit that in a second here. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, bring on our next guest, Adrian Moss. And, uh, Franklin, the uh, Grizzly Cubs are having having a season, uh, Adrian. You guys are 15-3, and three and uh, – Playing really well. The uh, sectional draw obviously is always a, a fun night, and I'm sure you guys were looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, how that would come out. And you end up getting a, a buy in uh, sectional 14 at East Central, and we'll play uh, Shelbyville or Whiteland. And I know Whiteland is a team that uh, you're very familiar with, so uh, I don't know if you're already starting to plan for these teams, Adrian, or, or what. But uh, just your overall thoughts on on uh, what you saw tonight with the sectional draw. Um, yeah, Wyland is – can you guys hear me, first of all? Yep, gotcha. Right. Yeah, Wyland's uh, – it's a rivalry game, man, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter how good we are and how good they are in any season. It's always going to be that we all we, – we make a joke kind of it's like the fair pride, the, like gas station, grocery store pride, you know, like you got to see these guys all the time, and they're well coached. They're a good team. So we try to – I try to just focus on playing our best basketball at the right time. You know, I think that's important – instead of who we're going to play and, you know, that it, whether you get a buy or not, like you, you can't control those things. So really just been talking about playing our bet, our best basketball at the right time is, is, is our focus. Hey, Adrian, we were kind of debating here a little bit uh, if it's better to get the buy or do you want to play earlier in the section and kind of get your feet underneath you, get a little warmed up. Do you have a preference there? I don't know. I was uh, me and our, my coaches were talking about that a little bit earlier. I was talking about some of our players. Um, I, I, Kyle, didn't you do something like last year about the the teams that don't play on Tuesday or something like that? But that sounds right. I'm getting old, Adrian. I don't remember all this. <laughs> yeah, stuff. I remember reading something about that. I don't know. I mean, um, we've we've lost a couple games. So our, our we got Friday and Saturday night canceled. We got put out in the first round of the county tournament. We lost two games there. So. Um, we, we wanted to play, um, but I also see the advantage of obviously having to buy. It's two games instead of three and, you know, and playing good teams. So I, this is my third year. So maybe year 10, I'll probably have a, a more rounded opinion of that. But like I said, we just trying to play our best basketball at the right time and be prepared for whatever situation that it brings, whatever team we're, we're playing. We want to be uh, playing really good basketball um, when we see them. Adrian, you guys had uh, you've had success uh, previously in the in the sec in the sectional tournament. You got two years ago uh, made that run, uh, won the uh, sectional at Greenwood. Um, you know, made it all the way to the regional final that year. You know, back that was uh, and, and again a reminder that we're in a one game regional now. But when it was two games two years ago, you made it to the final of that that and uh, lost to Bloomington North. But uh, you know that was a team that was under five hundred going in. Now you're sort of in a different position, you know, probably as the the favorite uh, going in. But but how does that change? I mean, I, I'm sure you'd rather the, being the favorite means you've had a good season, obviously. Uh, but how does the what's the mentality or a different mentality with that maybe than there was two years ago? 
Um, I wouldn't say for necessarily for us. It's probably, you know, I think when you have a good record and, you know, you, you, you have a ranking or I think other teams probably, you know, are going for you probably harder than they were before. But I mean, like when the whole, the whole rankings and all that stuff, like we, we want to be ranked. We, 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 we have expectations. Like we, we love that. But at the same time, you understand how fast you can fall off of that. So it's just staying never too high, never too low, whether you're the top dog, you're the underdog or Whatever the situation is, you're dealing with high school kids, you know, like you just got to get them to stay focused no matter if you're number one in the state like Fishers or if you're six and 14 like we were and being the underdog. You know, you, you try to stay level headed. You try to stay never too high, never too low and just grind, man, and, and be prepared for anything and play your best basketball. Hey, Adrian, uh, talking about that team that kind of made the surprise run a couple of years ago, Micah Davis, this was a big part of that. How much has he kind of progressed over the last two years to have you in this position now? I mean, Mike is, he does, I mean, he leads us in points, leads us in assists, leads us in rebounds. Um, and pretty much every category that we have as a basketball team, Mike is leading us in. So Micah was part of that team. Wyatt was part of that team. Uh, Ryder Street was part of that team. Grant Hunter was part of that team. So we have guys that were sophomores at that time that got that experience. Um, but to speak on Micah, I mean, he's gotten so much better, man. We talked about over season, working on his right hand, becoming becoming better three-point shooter. He's shooting mid-30s from the three. He, he Guys are sending him right. He's finishing right. He's put his head down, and he worked his butt off. I think our whole team, after that sectional loss last year, um, we just spent so much time. They, these guys have spent so much time in the gym. Um, we can't get these guys out of the gym. I mean, Mike is part of that. I mean, he's just put so much work in shooting and, and ball handling and working. I know he works with trainers and does all types of stuff. So you're really seeing, like I heard, I was watching earlier, and Garrett was talking about player development. I know some coaches think you just are who you are. Or this kid is just that. But we, I truly believe that players can improve. If you work on your game, you you understand what you're trying to work on and what you're trying to improve on, you can really, really improve over a year, over two years, over three years. And I think you're seeing that with Micah. I think he's always had the talent. He's always had the, the length and athletic ability. And now he's honed in his skills. And I think also his mentality of just being a leader, doing whatever the team needs to win, being a team first guy. Um, he's bought into that completely. I mean, on the court, you can tell by his his vibe, his his how hard he plays, how hard he competes. Um, he's willing to do it. He's competitive, man. He wants to win, and he does everything for us. Um, I'm, I'm sad to see him graduate along with all my other seniors, man. So he's just gotten so much better, and I'm super proud of him. And again, talk about Micah Davis. He was the uh, uh, surely going to be an Indian All Star at this point. I would I would assume, and uh, headed to uh, Eastern Kentucky. Adrian wanted to ask you too. You're in sort of a uh, you know I don't want to overlook Shelbyville either. They're going to be playing Whiteland in that. They're definitely an improved team as well, uh, playing that Tuesday night game. And also Columbus East and Columbus North will play that first uh, round as well. So you'll have East Central also with the bye uh, in that one. And, th and this uh, sectional brings me to the point, Adrian of uh, you're playing at East Central, which is a pretty good haul. So you could be playing, you could be playing Whiteland over at East Central. <laughs> so how? Right. What's that? What's that? Uh, you know, uh, it's not ideal, but you know, East Central's kind of, you know, it's not their fault. They're just sort of out there by themselves as a as a similar size school. But but how does that change your uh, approach for the week or or some of that travel? How does that change things? Oh, uh, well, we, we thought we had a game at Washington on Tuesday because we our Columbus North guys. So we I was looking at that. I'm like, well, we get to go to Washington and we get to drive all the way down there and go play. And that'll be a good experience for East Central. But I think we're going to um, I mean, I think we're probably will 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 we're going to go down there and practice Saturday. And I think that we'll probably get a hotel if we win. If we do win Friday night, we'll probably get a hotel and stay down there so we don't have to drive back. Um, but I've never been down there. Uh, don't know much about um, East Central, um, but I'm sure they're they're ready to host a great sectional. So it, it doesn't matter, man. Like all the different things that are involved, you, you got to be ready to go. You can't 
let anything creep, any type of doubt creep in. Oh, we got to drive. And everybody has the same, you know, almost the same situations. And we have to drive a little farther than other teams. It doesn't matter. You still got to get the job done. And you can't let those types of things creep into your mind and make excuses and that type of thing is we got the buy. We got to be ready to go on Friday nights. And that's that. Adrian, I know you talked about Micah obviously leading you guys in almost everything, but you also touched on Ryder and Wyatt and Grant, those guys that had been there for a few years playing varsity as a sophomore. Have you noticed a different sense of urgency in them this year that, hey, this is our last go round? We, if we got to make it happen this year, this is our last chance to do something special. 100%. I mean, I noticed that from the, honestly, I noticed that from our first workout in the spring last year. I thought it was a different – I thought everything was different. And we only had one senior last year. So – and he kind of started playing his freshman year. He didn't have a whole lot of experience. So we were super young last year. And I think – I really I, – I felt that the first – when we went in the weight room, the first spring workout we had, I could feel that urgency of how good these guys wanted to be. And we, we put a huge emphasis on the weight room this summer. And those guys – everybody put on five, ten pounds over the summer. Practices have, have – I don't have to coach effort and attitude. And the past few years, I, I had a good group, but it just it, I've never had a group like this. Um, we I could go in the gym and, and talk like I'm talking to you guys. They're going to set up their cuts. They're going to get set on their screens. They're going to cut hard. They're going to talk. They're going to close out and chop their feet. They're going to wall up. You know, all the little things that we talk about that we think wins games, they do these things without being told that. Now, these are things that have been coached over the years, you know, but it's it's impressive to have a senior led group that you could just tell when you walk in the gym, they're ready to go there. If, if, if I'm in the office and practice is supposed to start at 315 and I get out to the gym at 320, I'm not going to walk into the gym of guys shooting left handed jumpers and over here. These guys are in a group talking. They're doing form shooting. They're doing two balls. They got their bands out. They're 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 ready to go. So they kind of self govern themselves. And if there's one guy that doesn't want to buy into what, like you can just see, it doesn't it doesn't go over well with the group. So they they're they they're, they're not clicky. They they roll together. You know, we got a core of like six, seven, eight players that just stick together at all times. They got each other's back, um, and it's translated to wins for us. So we've kind of now we can see our younger kids can see what a winning group looks like, you know, and, and I think last year we weren't that and this year we are. So um proud of this group. Um, it's a favorite group I've ever coached. Adrian, you touched on, uh, we. I just asked Garrett this question. You may have heard it, but I know you still have, uh, you know, Plainfield and Jennings County, I believe are still on your schedule for this week. Uh, how much, you know, those are, you know, Plainfield's obviously a very good team. I know Jennings County is not what they were last year, but still, you know, Carter Kent can put up 40 on about anybody. Uh, what what do you uh, – how do you approach these last uh, couple of games in the season knowing you've got the sectional to look ahead to? Uh, but you don't necessarily know your opponent uh, because you got the bye, but uh, yeah. how much do you put into these last two games? Yeah, that kind of changes things that we don't know our opponent, but we actually did the opposite last year. So I heard Garrett talking – um, we focused on Columbus North and didn't really uh, do a whole lot for Jennings County. And we went down there and got our butts kicked <laughs> bad. So and all week, like that game was Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we, we touched on Jennings County Thursday, I think Thursday, maybe a little bit Wednesday, but Thursday, normally we would start way before that. And we were just focused on Columbus North because we had just played them. They play a lot of three, two, and we were really trying to um, play against that all week. And then we went down to Jennings County and got our butts kicked. So, um, I'm still focused on these next two games. Plainfield, we got a chance to win the conference outright. I think that's only been done twice. I can't go past the like 92 on John Harrell, but in <laughs> back to there, it's only been done once. So I don't know exactly how long it's been, but we got a chance to go 7 0 in our conference against a really good team, uh, uh, Plainfield. And then uh, Jennings County whooped our butts last year, and they're coming to our place this year. I know Rob Kent, we're both UND alumni. Um, I think they got a really good team. So um, for right now, we're focused on this week. We're focused on playing field on Tuesday, and then we're focused on Jennings County Friday. And then it helps that we don't play till the next Friday, which gives us a little time. So maybe, you know, over the years it'll be a little different, but we're kind of in the opposite situation. We're really focused on this week on these games and finishing the season strong and keep playing the, the way we've been playing 
Um, Wyatt just got back, so this will only be his second game back. So we're he's back in the lineup. It's a little different dynamic, so we're trying to get that chemistry going back. So, like I said, we're focused on this week and trying to win these games. Yeah, that certainly changes it when you're playing for a conference uh, championship also. That that can help everybody get locked in. Uh, Decatur Central, I know they, they have one loss, right, in the conference, so that would be the team. Uh, that would uh, yeah. So we've shared it already, but we could we could win it outright if we if we uh, win Tuesday. Right on. Well, good. Well, thanks, Adrian Moss. Again, uh, Franklin is uh, fifteen and three uh, playing in the East Central uh, sectional sectional fourteen, and they have the bye into uh, Friday night's semifinal. Adrian, uh, congrats and uh, thanks thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks thanks for all you guys do, man. Love following you guys. You guys are great. Love it. Appreciate it, Adrian. Take care, no Adrian. Thank you, sir. Well, right before we had Adrian on, guys, uh, Trevor was going to touch on something. I think it was the Chesterton <clears throat> section. Yeah, uh, section or Chesterton sectional and the uh, East Chicago Central uh, sectional. I think both of those. Shark was saying there's some interesting <clears throat> matchups. Both are really balanced. Um, you know, they they don't have the firepower of you know a sectional eight or a sectional ten, but starting in that sectional two at Chesterton. First game, you know, Portage against Chesterton. Two really good teams. Portage just beat Chesterton by about 21 uh, last week or two weeks ago, sometime pretty recently. Um, Chesterton really needs to get sophomore Logan Picorni back. I think that would help them. I'm not sure on the timeline for him, his return yet. Um, but Portage is a really good uh, season. Then on the other side, uh, Valpo versus Hobart in the – section or in round one um and they would play the winner or that winner plays crown point kankakee valley winner and obviously crown points had a really good season falpo's had a great year under ben liskey his first year they're 18 and 5 jack smiley just having an unreal junior season um so crown point just whole, knocked off valparaiso uh, a week or two ago didn't they trevor yeah, that was a really tight game. Actually, uh, that was an interesting game because they called a buzzer beater at the end of the third, a two for Valpo, when it was clearly a three on video. Uh, really changed the whole game. Obviously, you don't know what would have happened, but the dynamics of that whole fourth quarter kind of changed because it was real tight. Um, so that one point really came back to be a big difference maker. But yeah, any of those, I think four teams, Portage, Chester, and Crown Point, Valpo could walk away as a winner there. And nobody has, you know, an unbelievable draw. Everything's pretty balanced out there. So that should be a pretty good one. Um, Chesterton's Tyler Parrish had 33 against Valpo uh, last night or two nights ago. When was that? Last night. Um, Probably a lock for the Indiana All-Star team at this point, I would say, or at least very, very close. Having an unbelievable season. Had a great career for Chesterton. Um, so he might be able to put the Trojans on his back and uh, get another sectional title for Mark Urban. Who had him as a lock? I, I think uh... – I, I think I did already. Is that was that right? Well, you had fourteen locks, I believe. If we go back to <laughs> Shark, had one and a half. Shark, he, he, he's a big hater on this uh, senior class. Yeah, hey, uh, he, he had one lock. I like uh, I like uh, South Bend Riley too in that uh, Mishawaka sectional. I think they're probably I, I think they're a legit uh, you know team that could cause some problems for people uh, down the road too, and then. Guys, I was also looking at. I think Kokomo's sectional looks looks really. Um, I don't want to say it's weak this year, but I think they've got a pretty good chance to get through there uh, pretty easily. And then they would play the way the regionals line up. They would play the winner of the Noblesville sectional, so that could be a really dynamite regional game. Yeah, it seems like Kokomo's really hit a different gear here. Uh, kind of when the calendar turned to twenty twenty four. The two-headed monster, Flory Baduinga and uh, Carson Rogers, has been fantastic for him. And there's just not many people that can match up with that size. Obviously, nobody's matching up with Flory at the high school level. But then you throw in Carson Rogers, and then you really have problems. Yeah, we looked at their guard play at the, the start of the year and kind of wondered what was going to come to that. But it hasn't affected them at all. And the to their credit, they know where their bread is buttered. They know it's Carson Flory, and 
those two Carson's really taken a huge step forward this year uh, with all the attention paid to Flory. He's been able to capitalize. He's had some monster games for the Wildcats. So um, we thought at the start of the year, oh, are they going to be able to make another run in 4A? And they seem to be primed and to ready to do that. Yeah, and I, I think uh, also wanted to touch on Center Grove. We didn't mention them or the uh, Terre Haute South uh, sectional, which is really interesting because you got Brownsburg and Plainfield are playing right off the bat. It's only a five-team sectional, uh, but those two teams out of Hendricks County have to go all the way to Terre Haute South <laughs> to play. And then I think probably the winner of this sectional, as far as the draw goes, is Avon, you know, because they're on the opposite side, uh, whereas Brownsburg and Plainfield have to play to play tarot north which is probably you know shoot i think they're 20 and 3 and uh you know they've got some serious talent and then uh, tarot south is avon's opponent and they're on their home floor but probably the weakest of the bunch in that group so i look at that and i thought avon came out of that pretty pretty good in the uh sectional 12. yeah i think there's no doubt that was the uh the best try they could get um like you said, really good top four teams there with Brownsburg, Terre Haute, North Avon, and Plainfield. Um, for Avon to, or uh, yeah, for them to get the buy there is it's just huge. And they haven't been well, playing. I, they, not buy, I mean, but yeah, to the, avoid Terre Haute North basically, avoiding that first game, so you don't have yeah. to play three. Um, they haven't been, you know, they played some better teams here lately and haven't been gathering the wins that they were early on, but I think still a dangerous team. Obviously you only have to win one now to get to that final. And then uh, Brownsburg and, and Plainfield. I mean, you just don't know uh, those teams have both beaten really good teams. They've both lost games that, uh, you know, maybe they shouldn't have, or they, they haven't finished games at times where you, you kind of thought they would. Uh, Plainfield lost last week to uh, Greenwood. That was a surprise, surprising game. So, that one to me is one of the more interesting groups, even though it's only five teams. And then I think Center Grove, you know, the way they've been playing, uh, Trevor, I just feel like they're a pretty clear favorite at the the Bloomington North uh, sectional. Yeah, definitely. And kind of going back to the start of the year, like Shark was talking about Kokomo, Center Grove, you thought they were going to kind of build off last year, but then they got off to a shaky start, losing to Franklin. Warren Central really having their way with them at the uh, Forum Tip-Off Classic kind of didn't know where this season was going to go for Zach Hahn, and now they're just rolling. Uh, Joey Schmitz has had an unbelievable senior year. Uh, some of the shots he hit, I, I watched him a couple of weeks ago, and on the move threes, just knocking down shots left and right against Jeffersonville. Really impressive. So it looks like, you know, those Trojans are uh, poised for another deep uh, state tournament run here. Yeah, and their, their uh, shooting numbers are just really incredible uh, this season from the three-point line. Uh, we're not going to go through all of the uh, other classes. Maybe at some point uh, this week we can kind of, if you guys have time or whatever, we can dive into them. But I did want to touch on, you know, 3A um, or all the classes real quick. But, you know, Shark, did you see what, what in what in 3A uh, kind of stood out to you? I, there's an obvious one there that uh, is in our uh, immediate area, but uh, – what kind of caught your interest in that class? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, the sectional 27 at Garen, Garen and Burbuff being on opposite sides of the sectional. Um, I think those two are, are clearly the two um, best teams in that sectional. The one chance I got to see Garen in person, uh, Rob Sorensen was spectacular at the forum tip off classic. And I know Evan Haywood's having a fantastic year for Burbuff. So um, those two teams kind of, lining up to meet in the championship game on Saturday night, you know, barring any upsets there. I think they both have pretty easy games on Tuesday. Garen against Heron and Shortridge is going to take on Burbuff, just kind of get their feet wet. Um, that's, you know, an interesting look there. I think uh, you go out to um, Greensburg sectional just outside of Indy. Uh, there's some quality teams there. And um, I know Tri-West and Danville uh, up at sectional 25 and Lebanon are, are on opposite sides of the bracket. That could be a, a very interesting championship game if that uh, comes to fruition there, Kyle. Yeah, I covered that game. Uh, they've actually played twice now already uh, this season. Danville, uh, I covered the, the Hendricks County game. Uh, Danville beat Tri-West. Uh, but I, I really came away out of that one thinking they were 
pretty closely, uh, you know, matched teams. Danville, maybe they have a lot of experience. Basically, their whole team is back from last year, and they're they're sort of a sneaky, you know, number one team. I mean, that you, you don't think of them necessarily. You don't maybe get the the statewide attention uh, that's that uh, Brownstown does or people like that. But uh, you know, really a tough team, and and uh, obviously Evan Lawrence, who's going to IU for football, is 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 a beast inside for them. Uh, but they've also got some other good players uh, to go around them too. So, and Brian Barber always, you know, always seems to have his teams playing well. The Garen uh, sectional you mentioned, uh, Shark. I think that you know that matches up. It, it actually came out kind of like a seeded bracket where you're going to get, uh, you know, probably two teams in the semifinal and Heritage Christian and Chatard that are like kind of sleeperish type of teams. Uh, and Heritage actually took for buffed overtime. I think that was uh, about a week ago. So. You know, a team that could maybe, you know, Trey Granger's got that team playing hard and, and playing well. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it would be a surprise. But, again, you know, it's a game where maybe you put a little pressure on Burbuff. Uh, and, and I did cover the first burbuff Garen game. And just a great – I mean, those two teams are are definitely state title contenders in 3A. Uh, they have they have a lot of pieces on both sides. And garen has got the experience, too, of making it to the, the state finals last year. So I'm really excited to see, you know, what happens over there at Garen. Yeah, uh, kind of going off uh, off the grid a little bit here, going down south, uh, the Princeton sectional kind of popped out to me. You have Heritage Hills led by Trent Sisley against Princeton. I think those are the two best teams. And then they play in two days here. They play Tuesday yep. night. And then obviously they turn around and play each other in the first round of the sectional. So that always makes things interesting. You see that get split a lot where one team wins the regular season and one team wins in the sectional. So see uh, how that kind of plays out down there. Yeah, I saw that too. And that, that's uh that'd be a good question too, to, you know, ask like, you know, how much do you hold back? I mean, you may not get a coach who's going to tell you, <laughs> tell you obviously, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, that would be interesting because it's almost like a trial run. Just, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. You're not going to do everything, but uh, but what do you do? The the sectional at Beach Grove is it's not a it's not one two and three a that's going to like pop off the page at you. But man, I don't even know who who will win that one. That that you got Purdue Poly, you got Washington, uh, Crystal House, and Ritter are all all probably you know have a ch good chance. You know, and I don't even know who you'd pick as a favorite out of that. Really, I mean, I like Washington's got you know Clem Butler who's six eleven. Uh, inside, uh, you know, David Brigham for a, a Crystal House, a good player. Ritter's got a lot of uh, good guards. Uh, you know, they they can get up and down. And uh, Beach Grove and Speedway aren't aren't uh, far off. You know, so you get six teams in there that are, uh, you know, probably four that are really capable, and then a couple who could who could make things happen. But that's a really maybe one of the most balanced sectionals in three A. Yeah, because one of the teams that you probably probably the worst team, definitely by record, Beach Grove five and sixteen on the year. They're hosting it, and they've won so much recently. You would think that kind of plays in, give them a little confidence, even though their record doesn't say they should have much of a chance in this one. So, basically, uh, throw a dart at the board and see what happens there. Yeah, Kyle, you mentioned that uh, just to drop back down to Princeton, that Heritage Hills Princeton game. That's going to be for a conference championship. Um, Princeton's got one conference loss on the year. Heritage Hills has two. Um, Princeton can either win the conference outright or Heritage Hills can claim a share for that. So you mentioned holding back, you know, how much can you really do that when you're, you're playing for a conference title? You know, it's kind of a, what would you rather have a shark at a sexual yeah. title or a conference? <laughs> title? Well, I mean, how much are you willing to let go? How much are you willing to hold back, um, uh, to try to do that? You know, it's it's an interesting dynamic. You know, you, you want to obviously win a conference title, but then you're looking at the postseason and you, you got to win a sectional title to advance. So you're trying to weigh that and balance it um, here. And, uh, like Kyle said, I'd like to see if teams play each other in the last week or two of the regular season that meet up again in the sectional. How many teams sweep those two games and how many times are they split? I think that would be really interesting to look at. That'll be a good project for you to do before we talk next, uh, Shark. I'll get on. I'll get on that tonight. I think, yeah, and it's probably too. Probably oh, that's you, true at all. Yeah, <laughs> you, you probably go out there and throw everything at them, and then have to adjust maybe too to that, that you know what doesn't work or whatever. Also, but uh, there's so moving to a two A real quick, uh, Shark. You, you may 
I don't know how many of these teams you've seen exactly. Obviously, Blackout Christian is has been a team that people know about and uh, has been a team that's been made their way down to Indy many times, including last year. Uh, but that sectional they're in at Bluffton, man, it's, uh, you know, you got Manchester, Lures, Adam Central, and Blackhawk that are all sort of, uh, you talk about balance, man, those, those all the four of those teams are right there with each other. Yeah, you're looking at, you know, I think this is kind of what we talked about uh, maybe with a couple of the four guys we've had on here is um, I think you just want to get a bye just so you have to win fewer games. Uh, you look at Blackhawk getting the bye. Uh, they would probably take on an Adam Central team that, you know, Aaron McClure's kind of been building up to this year uh, with the Jets. They've got a lot of seniors on their roster. They've got some size. Um, Blackhawk has really impressed me. I got a chance to see them a few weeks back. Kellen Pickett was, I don't want to say not the lead guy last year because he was very good, but he didn't have to carry everything. He had Josh first. He had um, – Gage Sept and those other guys. When I saw him, he was really vocal and really taking on the leadership program. They have one of the best shooters in the state, and Isaac Smith, a veteran point guard, Naden Muldoon. Uh, Bryce Septon's come along his junior year, um, and Kellen's just taking his game to another level. He's really tough to match up with. Can post, can put the ball on the floor, can shoot it from deep. He's really good defensively, um, guarding people. He did a Fantastic job shutting down Joey Hart in the state title game in the second half last year. Gavin Benton at Manchester. Lures has a bunch of size with the Truesdales. Um, Whitco at 16 and four. You know, this is a really competitive sectional. I'd probably, I'd probably give the edge to Blackhawk right now, but it uh, wouldn't surprise me to see Lures, Manchester, Adam Central uh, make an appearance in the title game. And if, you know, things fall the right way, one of those schools. Uh, coming away with the the Nets there on Saturday night in Bluffton. Yeah, and Lourdes beat uh, Blackhawk uh, earlier this season. I know it's been a while, uh, probably more than two months ago, but they did they did beat uh, Blackhawk this season. So, yeah, really good uh, group there uh, in Class Two A, and also down south you've got uh, just a just an absolute uh, murderer's row. Brownstown Central is definitely the team to beat down there at Southwestern Hanover, but. Uh, you know, the host team, Southwestern, is good. You know, they're, all these teams are top 10 uh, with, with uh, Brownstown, Southwestern, and Providence. Uh, actually, Providence and Southwestern are both ranked fifth. They're tied in uh, this week's poll, and uh, Brownstown is second. So, I mean, those, you know, in Providence, they gave Brownstown all they could handle last year in the sectional. It was a two-point game, and uh, Brownstown beat them again earlier this year, I think by 12 or 13, but – uh, but yeah, Providence team with a lot of tournament success, but Brownstown, I think might be a different breed this year with, uh, with everything they've got. Yeah. I think Jack Benner definitely makes Browntown central, the, the heavy favorite there, but you can never count out a uh, Providence. Kyle Lovins had a great uh, senior year for them and obviously always really well coached there, but I still, uh, I definitely give the edge to Brownstown central here. Yeah, Brownstown, obviously, with Benter leading, they're one of the most fun teams to watch in the state. They're, there are no amount of threes that are too much for them. Um, they've got a bunch of guys that can shoot it in the 40 to 50% range. They play uh, some kind of uh, kind of a funky 1-3-1 one, one defense that can give people problems. But, you know, Providence won a state title a couple years ago. Southwestern Hanover, obviously, sitting at 19-3. and three. They're really good. and. If those threes don't fall on any given night for Brownstown, are they gonna? How can they figure out another way to win the, to win when their shots aren't falling? So, be interesting to see. Providence obviously has a defensive background. That's what carried in them to their state title a couple of years ago. But I agree with Trevor and and you, Kyle. I think they have to be the favorite, but uh, they need to tread carefully here because I think there's some other teams that are primed to knock them off if if they're not ready. Yeah, I think, uh, and also in 2A, uh, Tipton and uh, Wapahani, as it breaks down, they're in different sectionals, but they would meet, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I got this right, they would meet in the in the regional. Uh, so, you know, those two teams, I think, uh, pretty heavy favorites in their respective sectionals. And, you know, I've had a chance to see Tipton, and they're, they're very good, uh, you know, really knock down shots and get up and down the court. Uh, so this could be a chance for them. Uh, to make a pretty deep run uh, in the tournament, Wapahani as well. Uh, you know that that's a team. They're always good. It seems like they haven't been able to get all the way to uh, 
you know, to, to game bridge and, and, and win one, but uh, seems like they're always right there. This might be a year for them to do it too. And then, uh, you know, one A. I think uh, there was an interesting. I don't know. Did you see the? Uh, were you watching the draw show, Shark? Or I was not able to to watch the draw show this afternoon, unfortunately. Okay. Well, was they had frozen. Yeah, well, it was sort of. It was, so, <laughs> uh, sectional fifty nine. Uh, they forgot Central Christian was was in the tournament this year. They were out of it last year, and uh, so they had to they had to redraw, and it ended up probably working in favor of Greenwood Christian mostly uh, because they ended up on the opposite side of the bracket from Lutheran and Tinley in that three, that, uh, you know, not a three team sectional, but three teams with the probably a realistic chance. Uh, so at first it was, uh, it was Tinley that had the advantage and then turned out to be Greenwood Christian. So uh, they had to redraw it. But uh, so Lutheran would play, um, they would play uh, Tinley if they win. Tinley's got the bye. Lutheran plays uh, Victory College Prep. Lutheran, the defending state champs. And now Greenwood Christian's on the other side uh, with a pretty good route uh, to the uh, sectional championship game. So that was a little odd. They had to redraw it. And I think at the end of the 2A bracket, they announced that and, and made that change. I don't think I've seen that before. But uh, it ended up hurting, uh, ended up hurting uh, Tinley, but helping Greenwood Christian a little bit. So... A little bit odd, but uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we can touch on more if you guys have time. Maybe at some point this week, maybe uh, deep dive a little bit more into uh, some of the classes, or just touch on a little bit more of the each class more than we did tonight. We had it kind of heavy on four A, and with our guests too, that kind of took up some time. But uh, glad they came on. It was in interesting to hear uh, from those three, and uh, all three have had uh, great seasons. Obviously, yeah, no doubt. It's uh, it was interesting to get Garrett's thoughts about having to play Carmel right away after they're the only loss on the resume right now. <laughs> How he's going to go about that? Yeah, I think it's uh, it is. I guess it would be true too. You 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 got motivation right right away. That's yeah, maybe one. That's one spin you could put on put on yeah. it. But uh, and you, you have know. your kids' attention too because it it's right there for with what happened a few weeks back. Yeah, and, and Carmel, I think they just—if they can get ahead of you—I mean, they're hard. They are very hard to beat, uh, you know. And we, everybody knows that. It's just—it's just, it's just uh, hard to keep it from happening. They're obviously playing a lot better too. So, all, all in all, I think uh, I think four A really is interesting this year because there's not that. You know, we didn't even talk about Ben Davis. You know, who is? Uh, you know, I think they're pretty clearly the favorite in Section Eleven, uh, but we don't have a team like Ben Davis last year uh with this year we maybe thought that with ln slightly but uh they've they've uh come back to earth a little bit uh but there's really not that i mean there's so many teams that could win it in my opinion yeah and it seems like the the draw is really balanced this year it doesn't seem like there's too many you know de facto championship games where they're in the first round or something like that that you see a lot in, in these draws it seems like it's more balanced this year but probably because the teams are more balanced too. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for uh, coming on. And uh, I think we ended up going about an hour and 13 minutes. So, uh, but appreciate you guys doing it. And uh, like I said, we'll maybe we can do this again before the sectional uh, play starts and uh, talk a little bit more in depth on some of these teams. Yeah. We need more region talks. So we'll have to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, sub, a subset uh, region. talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle.